Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to wherever you're uh, tuning in. Thank you very much for joining us. The Sustainable Professionals Association of Saudi Arabia is pleased to have with us Michel Benavides, an international uh, nonprofit executive director for the International Society for Sustainability Professional. She's a successful business leader, an international trainer, and strategic community builder. Michelle leads the ISSP in its mission to empower sustainability professionals across the workforce around the world. And during her time as CEO and co-founder of LE Rigby Innovations, Michelle built an organization to support the sustainability industry need to move faster, empowering sustainability specialists to accelerate actions in the field. She's a lead AP BDN plus C credential holder, a high performance building educator, and the US Green Building Council faculty member, as well as a Fitwell ambassador. Michelle has trained more than 2,000 professionals worldwide by delivering on-demand courses and in-person sessions in her community building work. She has represented ISSP, ASHRI, USGBC, Ideas for Us, and for other organizations to teach sustainability fundamentals. And she is also a proud former classroom teacher and holds a master's in education. Michelle believes it will take collective action to create future envisioned by the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Her mission is to accelerate the impact of future leaders, expand knowledge of sustainable professionals, and inspire everyone to step into their power to create more sustainable tomorrow because we truly are better together. Thank you, Michelle, for joining us. We are pleased Thank to you. have you with us. Thank you. Thank you, and good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Uh, it is early morning here where I am here in the U.S., um, but I, I understand it's been a very successful, great day of speakers, and I'm, I'm so glad that you're here today to to uh, to learn from SPSA and to be able to join us here worldwide. Thank you very much. So let's start with a question. ISSP, International Society of Sustainability Professionals. Can you give us an idea on it, the mission, the goals? What does the ISSP strive to uh, achieve and promote for professionals in the world? Absolutely. So the International Society of Sustainability Professionals is the world's leading association for the profession across the world and across the SDGs. Um, we understand, um, as all of you do, that many professionals feel unsupported and can feel overwhelmed by the massive amount of transformation that's needed to really hit those 2030 commitments. Um, so we provide a trusted community training and tools uh, through membership and a network to help connect with resources. Um, this really helps everyone to avoid burnout, helps you not be so ineffective in projects and can quickly achieve goals and create sustainable change. And that's one of the things I wanted to focus on is SPSA derived this vision from what ISSP has established in the past years. So as an executive director of ISSP, uh, what are your main responsibilities and how do you see yourself uh, advancing those key initiatives leading ISSP? Sure. So a lot of my, my key responsibilities here are helping to lead that strategy, as you mentioned. So making sure that I'm aware of what you all need out in the world doing your job every day. Um, and that is going to range everything from students who are just entering the field need to understand the fundamentals of sustainability all the way through to making sure that experts have the tools and, and are able to connect with one another to accelerate their work. Um, so that is going to be everything from finance and buildings all the way to fashion and, and the, the supply chain, et cetera, all the way across um, everyone who considers themselves sustainability professionals. Um, so my job is making sure everyone that I'm aware as much as possible um, what's going out in the world going on out in the world and how we can best support that that mission forward. Excellent. And I think definitely that's something I mentioned in the beginning of this uh, day in these events is basically, you know, um, there is a gap in the market to support the mm -hmm. professionals to reach their goals and the sustainability depends on the different sectors and segments, as you said. So from that point, how do you see uh, ISSP can support and empower sustainable professionals in their careers and their professional development? So we do that in a few ways. Um, the most uh, important way is really bringing together the community of sustainability professionals around the world. So making sure that somebody sitting in Nigeria has access to how things are being done in Australia, has access to how things are being done in New York, um, is able to connect, collaborate, understand how we can stop reinventing the wheel, um, because these challenges really are global. 
um, and are so interconnected. So we need to make sure that across sectors and across borders, we're really opening that dialogue and making sure everyone has a safe space to ask questions, to connect, and to make sure that you know we're not we're we're not starting over every time some uh, an organization says, "Hey, we need to do X, Y, or Z." Uh, we need to make sure that that you instantly have resources to get hit the ground running and, and be effective in that work. Yeah, and I think definitely uh, ISSP has managed that in different aspects in different ways. And I think one of the highlights that um, for me individually when I learned about ISSP is the education content and the credentialing mm -hmm. program that ISSP can provide. So from that perspective, how do you see the ISSP credentialing or the programs that can they can provide ISSP to individuals be part of their success story? Absolutely. So the other aspect beyond community that we really focus on here at ISSP is making sure that professional development is, and training is available across a wide range of sustainability topics, as we know that this, this uh, field encompasses many, many, many aspects of how to make the world a better place across those sustainable development goals. Um, and one of the ways that we make sure that everyone is prepared to do this work is uh, we developed credentials, as you mentioned, the Sustainability Excellence Associate and Sustainability Excellence Professional um, several years ago. And they're now we now partner with GBCI um, who manages the lead suite. So they manage the credential and the exam, and then we do all of the education around it. And these credentials are going to be a really great way to ensure that sustainability professionals at any level of their career have the wide systems view of how sustainability works and ensuring that they understand the how of doing this work as well. So coming in with the stakeholder engagement pieces, the change management pieces, um, making sure they understand how private, public, nonprofit sectors all work together in this space, um, how the UN gets involved with the sustainable development goals, how policy works, how uh, reporting works with ESG, um, all of those things come together within these credentials. And it's a really, really fa fantastic way for a professional to be able to show the job market and show their peers what their credibility is in this field and what their knowledge base is. Um, so those are definitely, definitely great credentials for the field. The broadest, um, most recognized credentials as far as across the sustainability profession, rather than it within a single sector. Exactly. And I think I can vouch for that program myself as, you know, being the, uh, I hold it as a badge of honor being the first Saudi to actually be uh, a credentialed under the S. Uh, SEA uh, Sustainable Excellence uh, Associate, and I would definitely recommend it to any viewer. Uh, and I added that to my book, The Ten Steps to Become Sustainable Professional. That is really a, a credential that cross all of the sectors, all of the segments in sustainable development, and ticks all of the boxes. It doesn't matter where you come from, background, uh, um, tradition, uh, um, religion, whatever. Uh, ISSP definitely SEA. Um, covers all of that topics. Uh, we have with us more than 40 countries, representative from, from more than 40 countries. Uh, how do you see ISSP can collaborate with different organizations worldwide? Um, and of course, SPSA, we pride ourselves from being one of those partners, success partners yeah. in, the, in, in the region. So just to give a note to our audience, can you elaborate on that a little bit? Absolutely. So there's a few different ways that we work with organizations and we may ensure that there's access across many, many different countries. Um, one of the ways is how we work with, with you here at SPSA. Um, as an organizational member, as a, a partner in this work, we ensure that, that your members do have access to the network and to the community and the professional development. Um, we also work with organizations such as, um, you know, large corporate organizations, um, other nonprofits, et cetera to ensure that their staff also has wide range of professional development access and can ensure that they have what they need to accelerate the sustainability action plans within their within their scope. Um, so that is one way that we do work with a lot of organizations worldwide um, to ensure that not just the sustainability professional or the team, but anyone that is part of this work, procurement, uh, finance, you know, across the board, does have access to the knowledge that's appropriate for them uh, in order to make sure that we can be successful. Another really important way that we are working across borders. Um, as you mentioned, there's 40 countries develop, are working with us today or listening, tuning in today. Um, another great way that we do that is we align with the World Bank's pricing structure or, or the World Bank's economies. 
um, to ensure that we have accessible pricing across all regions in the world. Um, so that gives access based on that World Bank uh, level of economy um, to reduce pricing as appropriate um, to all of our products, our memberships, et cetera, uh, to ensure that that no one, no one is um, not able to access the network because we need absolutely everybody to get access to this training and this, this community in order to accelerate action. So I think that definitely there's lots of opportunities there for driving the change basically with yes. that we pre that we preach day in and day out. Yes. I think IOP is the vehicle basically that can guide us there in the near future. From your experience, uh, from an ISC perspective, um, what are the current challenges you see that can face a sustainability professional to really make a change, make a difference in the world? It's a lonely field still. Um, I think a lot of us feel that, um, especially in organizations that are just starting out in their sustainability journey, perhaps, um, may not have been some of the first to, to accelerate some of this work. Um, it can be a very lonely field. It can be a very isolated position. Um, that's one of the biggest challenges that we see in every corner of the globe. Um, you know, this is work that we do from a place of, of really being passionate about creating a better future. Um, but it can be disheartening when you're constantly up against a lot of challenges in the work that you're doing. Um, you're constantly bringing forward new ideas that may be very against the, the grain of, of the way your organization has done this for a lot of years. Um, yeah. That can be a, a very isolating position. So that's why it's so critical to be able to access a network of other professionals that can help you understand the best ways that they've faced similar challenges throughout the years um, and find others that are both at the same spot that your organization might be in as well as a few steps ahead, perhaps, so that they can give you some guidance um, and you are, have a place to ask questions. You're not just going to Google because, um, you know, that that is a good resource sometimes, but it's not always the most efficient. So um, we want to make sure that you have access to, to real people doing this work alongside you, whether it's, again, in, um, in Saudi Arabia, whether it's in New York City, whether it's in, you know, um, Sydney, Australia, it doesn't matter. There's a lot of things that we can all learn from each other. Um, and and help make this a little bit a little bit less challenging of of a, a profession um, from an isolation perspective. Exactly, and I, I think that's one of the things I saw basically when we established the SVSA is the amount of attention people really kind of um, enrolled immediately in it. You know, mm -hmm. uh, the number of people interested in having a community to basically discuss and be together as you said it's a lonely kind of field and i suffered from that personally on that agenda especially when i was doing my uh postgrad studies you know there was nothing basically you had to dig them from dig up the information from the ground there was no no information there in the market there are no, no sources and so on so it's uh, uplifting to see such an organization as ISSP and we uh, uh, also try to help with that in the region and, and specifically in Saudi Arabia. So from your pers perspective, you said that different sectors, uh, um, you know, um, take this sustainability uh, approach from different industries across different segments. And we had different sessions today talking about mm -hmm. IoT, talking about fashion, talking about energy efficiency and so on. So how do you see ISSP advocate for this integration uh, as a practice across different sectors? Sure. So there's always going to be some through lines, um, regardless of, of the sector that you're working in. There's going to be some through lines. There's going to be some change management that needs to occur. There's going to always be stakeholders that you're looking at. Um, for those that do have to report and are publicly mandated to report, whether that's in Europe or, or eventually here in the U.S. or, or elsewhere around the world, um, there's going to be standards that we need to hit. Um, those those are, are ways that we can all come together and understand how one another are doing this. Um, there's also that that aspect of sectors are all within uh, often within each other's supply chain are often interconnected from that perspective. Um, there's also going to be you know accountant to accountant to, regardless of where you're working. Um, so again, building that community and building that safe space of being able to understand how someone else is doing it, even if it's in a completely different sector, is a really, really important thing um, because we just don't have time for every sector to figure it out in different ways and then be clashing in the way that they might be reporting or doing so. Um, it just makes it that much more complicated for us to understand where we are today and where we need to go as, as an entire globe and entire sectors and, and industry 
um, to be able to move forward. Excellent. And I think definitely, as you tapped on the uh, uh, issue of the industries, um, I think yeah, there still needs to be lots of uh, traction there in terms of spreading the knowledge and the awareness and having those industries and through the supply chain collaborate and not work in silos. Mm -hmm. um, today, for example, one of the sessions we had was on the sustainability fashion industry, and I had lots of questions and remarks is, What's sustainability in fashion? What can sustainability do in fashion? What's the relationship between fashion and sustainability? So uh, it's enlightening to see that people are, you know, uh, uh, have this interest to know more. Uh, but at the same time, it tells me and tells uh, professionals and, um, and organizations such as ISSP and SPSA that we still have lots of work to do. And uh, there's lots of, you know, um, homework that we need to do and develop and um, collaborate. And... That's one uh, that brings me to maybe the final question is looking forward, we have the COP28 on the doorsteps mm -hmm. here in um in the region in the United Arab Emirates. Uh how do you see the collaboration or such an organization as ISSP can have an impact and have a presence and really uh, echo to the industry uh, the importance of this kind of um type of organizations and how can people, you know reach their sustainability goals, either from credentialing, education, and so on. Absolutely. So um, I, I can't I can't emphasize enough how important it is that we work together, that we collaborate, that organizations like ours are, are tapping into organizations like SPSA and so many more that are across the world really bringing people together. Um, COP28 is a, it's a really, COP in general, is a really great opportunity for the industry to come together and ensure that we understand how all of these SDGs are, are working interchangeably, how they're connected, how we, when we look at that SDG 17 and we look at how we can get resources to the rest of the, the issues covered by those SDGs, by all countries, developing countries, developed countries across those world, the World Bank uh, economies, making sure professionals have access. Um, that's where we can really come forward to make sure that those connections are in place that we can bring together all the nonprofits working um, in this space, all of the for-profit organizations interested in supporting the work that's happening um, and make sure that that across the world, professionals are aware of, you know, latest information of what's going on with COP and with, with all of the different interested parties that are coming together um, so that we can act appropriately as well and ensure that our work at an individual scale can be aligned with the greater good and, and what's happening in the broader, uh, the broader world. Um, we just, we cannot, we cannot be in our silos anymore. It's just impossible with this work. And um, ISSP has a mission to bring together everyone to ensure that we all have access to one another and to the tools and resources needed to ensure we can accelerate this work as quickly as possible. Um, we all see the data. We all know that Unfortunately, we're not hitting the goals as quickly as we need to be. Um, that's going to be obviously coming through in COP when it comes up here in the next month. Um, but at the end of the day, it's going to take every one of us being aware of where we all are and then not losing faith that we can reach the goals that we need to because we have no choice um, yeah. in order to create a sustainable future for us all. So it's all about coming together and ensuring that we can help one another across borders, across sectors, push forward towards a more sustainable future. I think you put it very well, well said. And that will lead me to one final thing before we end is how do you see the future? What are your kind of, let's say, recommendations or pointers to anybody listening from the professional industry who wants to be a sustainable professional? Um, how does ISSP envision the near future and the far future as well? I am forever a stubborn optimist when it comes to this work. This is challenging work. This is, um, we're up against really high stakes and we all know this. Um, keep keep pushing forward, keep pushing forward. It, it's a challenging job market sometimes. It's a, it's a challenging once you're in the, the position. Um, it's a difficult place to be when you're especially starting, starting out on a journey as an organization or starting out in your profession. Um, to find your place, make sure you can accelerate that action. But at the end of the day, 
keep faith, keep stubborn optimism, make sure that you keep pushing forward because the world needs every single person on this stream today to keep pushing forward. We, we all need each other to do this work. We all need each other to, to maintain that optimism. And, you know, we're, we're all going to be better together if we can connect through SPSA, through ISSP, and really just keep, keep checking in with yourself, ensure you're taking care of yourself, and ensure you're continuing to push forward on this work because the world needs you. I said it better myself. Thank you very much for that input. I think that's the chair and the top of the discussion. Uh, um, and uh, from my side, I think, you know, uh, if we had more time, I would go on and on about this because it's something, you know, uh, I cherish very much and I am uh, deeply cared, caring about this aspect and advancing the sustainable professionals basically in their own respective industries and specialities and helping them um, tackle the ob uh, obstacles that they may face. And definitely one of the, as I said, one of the um, main tools and assets that we uh, will use in SPSA is the ISSP platform and how we can collaborate and advance the knowledge in the region and help facilitate those education contents and um, credentialing in the region. Uh, any final words we have maybe just some, a minute or so you like to give just congratulations on the great work of SPSA thank you for for the great partnership that we have with you with you all in the region you all are doing a phenomenal phenomenal job coming together and ensuring that everyone is supported in this work and um we're we're grateful to be able to do this work alongside you and to be able to connect you with other regions in the world because um we need to connect both geographically and obviously um worldwide and across sectors so Thank you all for being here. Thank you for tuning in today. And thank you specifically, Mohammed, for bringing this all together today. This has been an incredible experience. And, and I'm so glad that you were able to bring this to, to the world. Thank you. It's an absolute pleasure having you. And definitely we will have more collaborations and more sessions coming in the near future. So stay tuned, audience, for uh, upcoming events and upcoming sessions. Thank you very much, Michelle. It's an honor and a pleasure having you. And we look forward to more to come. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of your sessions and rest of your day. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.